My name is Ryan Lane. I am the current chairperson for the Historic Preservation Commission, uh, and we are the ones that put on the walking tour every year in May. The, the walking tour itself is one of the major things that we do in May with Historic Preservation Month. Uh, that includes um, the walking tour in the first week of May, uh, the proclamation by the mayor, and then um, uh, also our uh, release of our endangered buildings list that we provide every year for buildings of historic note uh, that are in danger of being lost to either condemnation, vacancy, or neglect. When the commission chooses to uh, look at different options for our walking tour, uh, we are looking uh, sometimes to highlight areas that have either A, had some pretty recent um, uh, work and, and preservation done, and that's a good thing to highlight, and so we'll somewhat revolve the walking tour around a few properties, or it could be um, something that's um, a really good example of preservation, uh, whether it's a block um, or, or multiple blocks of our downtown area, uh, whether it's um, uh, an area that has uh, substantial neglect and, and needs to be preserved. Um, a lot of those tours start with a property or two in mind, and we look and see if there's anything within there that, that can make an entire tour or if it's not enough uh, to, to take that time. I believe this was the 16th walking tour that the, the commission has put on. Um, this year we chose the university as a commission because uh, it was the university's 150th anniversary uh, and the campus has really three distinct phases of, of building. Uh, the original campus, you know, the, the uh, math and science side of campus, and then um, uh, what Dr. Hoffman with the university described as brutalism, which is uh, a lot of the additions to the uh, south side of campus. And so uh, kind of going over uh, the architectural styles and, and um, ages of those buildings was the major focus this year because it was in conjunction with the 150th anniversary of the university. Yeah, so it's really, really important to have the conversations uh, and the awareness with the historic buildings because um, when you look at uh, the identity of Cape, right, a lot of our tourism is based upon two things. It's our historic district and youth sports, right? Um, and so um, you look at uh, drivers of the economy, that's where it is. The university is within the historic area, right? So you're talking about drivers of the local economy, that's where it is. And so when these things disappear, they're gone forever. You're never going to see something like that ever again. And so preserving them is a way to keep your city's and county's identity. A lot of our buildings and a lot of our, our commercial and residential buildings on that side of town um, are very important to telling the story of Cape, the originality of Cape, and how it grew to be a you know, municipality in a county of over 80,000 people versus just a small trade post. Getting involved with anything in historic preservation could be as simple as um, you know, supporting initiatives when they come across. We had the Broadway Theater recently. Um, we had, had the Himmelberger House, the old Honors House that, that came up through the uh, university and through the city. Um, and those initiatives were, were you know, definitely grassroots. There were people around town who volunteered to spend their time, you know, go door to door in the Boulevard District to get the approval to do the boutique in. So it could be as simple as just paying attention and, and being a part of the support system when that comes along. Uh, but we have a lot of places in town that need volunteers, right? You know, you have the Reynolds House and the Glen House and the Red House. Um, so being involved on a volunteer basis with our, our historic entities, um, you know, is also really important. Uh, becoming involved with the walk is as simple as just joining us every year when we do it and finding out more about the history of Cape. You know, in future years we have ideas about going through some of the um, more prominent people that are in the old Lormer Cemetery, you know, and, and walking through a cemetery and talking about, you know, who's buried there, who they were, what they did to help build the city. So there's a number of things that uh, could be very interesting to the community that you live in to find out more and be able to tell that information to people that you know.